The HP Pavilion Gaming Laptop versus the HP Victus. These are the benchmarks that are going to be coming up in just a few minutes. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, do some build quality assessments, check out the usability, and then we'll get into the performance benchmarks. So definitely hang on for those. And if you're curious about the exact pricing differences between each of these models, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do use that link to make a purchase, we'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. That's keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. First and foremost, let's check out the screen flex on each of these laptops as well as the screen wobble. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit these real quick. And it looks like there's a little less wobble on the HP Pavilion. Now let's check out the screen flex. Definitely a good bit of screen flex there. And almost the same. I'm going to say that this one has slightly less screen flex, but more screen wobble. Let's check now at the bottom. The bottom, this one has more screen flex at the bottom of the screen. Okay, next, let's see the thickness of each of these laptops. Looks like the HP Pavilion is almost the exact same. And then we'll pull up the weight and thickness of each laptop so you can see for sure which one is thinner. Overall, the craziest thing is the form factor is very similar on these two laptops, being that this is a 16 inch laptop, the HP Victus, and this is a 15 inch laptop. So this is a pretty large form factor for a 15 inch laptop, especially compared to the latest Victus laptop. Okay. So that's one thing that I'm going to point out. This is a pretty chunky laptop. They've been able to slim this one down and make it 16, which is pretty awesome. Regarding the ports, we have the exact same selection, just in a slightly different order. However, on the other side of the laptop, the HP Pavilion has one USB type A where the HP Victus has two USB type A's. So there's one extra port on the Victus compared to the HP Pavilion. Now regarding build quality, they're both plastic builds. They have a little bit of press on the top cover. I would say there's more press on the Pavilion than there is on the HP Victus. They both only have a vent on the side panel, bottom cover, and top of the keyboard deck. So the ventilation is exactly the same. We'll see how that pans out once we jump into the performance benchmarks. Now regarding the keyboard, my vote definitely swings towards the HP Victus. I love the larger trackpad. They're both quiet, but as you can see, the size difference is not even close. There is a massive trackpad on the Victus compared to the HP Pavilion. Both keyboards are good with a nice snappy key press. However, the HP Victus is slightly quieter. It is a doppelganger of the HP Omen keyboard, which I'm a big fanboy of if you've watched my channel for a long time. The screen bezels are very similar. However, you just get a larger 16 inch screen on the HP Victus. Now regarding the screen for color accuracy, color gamut range and brightness, you can check it out now. And regarding an audio test for the speakers, here's each of the laptops. Now, one thing I find odd, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I have full performance control settings on the HP Victus, where I do not have it on the HP Pavilion gaming laptops. So if you own the HP Pavilion gaming laptop and you've been able to get access to all the performance controls, let me know. But if you haven't, comment below and let everybody know that you can't, because I feel like that's a big win for the HP Victus, being able to control the fan modes, because it gives you access to better battery life, better cooling, and also better performance when you need it. Now, without further ado, let's jump into the performance benchmarks. I have before me here an i5 11400H with the RTX 3050 GPU. And over here, we have the Ryzen 5 5600H with a GTX 1650. So I'm curious how these two models having different specs are going to perform. I will have a Ryzen 5 version coming into the studio soon, but for right now, I was really curious how Intel would perform versus Ryzen. Now, jumping right into the simulated benchmarks, let's check out Cinebench R20, R23, Geekbench Single Core, and Multi-Core.
Moving on to 3D modeling, you can see that the RTX 3050 is definitely beneficial in all these different 3D modeling benchmarks. It's gonna be worth a little bit of extra money if you're gonna be doing 3D modeling with this laptop. Moving on to After Effects, however, we don't see a massive difference. There's definitely more performance out of the latest HP Victus, but it's not anything earth shattering, so both laptops will work well. As we move into video editing, you can see the export times from 1080p all the way up to 6K, and all of those are nine minute clips exported out of Premiere Pro. And remember, both of these laptops have 16 gigs of RAM, which is giving us smooth playback at 4K, decent playback at B-RAW, and then struggling playback at red footage. Now regarding the thermals, I'm seeing the HP Pavilion get better thermals at the full kind of like turbo mode where you're getting the most performance out of the laptop. However, when I pull the HP Victus down to quiet mode, it still has a great export time and it actually gets a better thermal result than the HP Pavilion. So because of the command center, you can get both you know high performance with you know medium to high thermals or low thermals with still great performance. So that's why I'm saying that command center access is actually pretty important. Moving on to Photoshop, Intel and Ryzen are neck and neck with their five series processors. So either laptop will work if you're gonna be using the Adobe Design Suite, Affinity, Sketch, Figma, whatever it might be, they'll both work for you well. The choice is yours for this Intel versus Ryzen showdown of the Pavilion versus the Victus. Now keep in mind, like I said, I'm hopefully getting the Ryzen 5 version of the Victus in the studio soon. So make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on that future upload. For now, links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and of course, subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one. We've officially seen Intel versus Ryzen, almost, you know, neck and neck. You know, what are your thoughts? Obviously this has a better GPU, so it wasn't the most fair fight, but you can't get this one with the RTX yet. So comment below and let me know.